William H. White's book, The Social Life of Small Urban Spaces, reports on the findings from his own investigation into why some city spaces work for people, why some don't, and what the practical lessons may be. After studying his work, the group took it upon themselves to explore some of Nottingham's best and worst urban spaces, gathering first-hand video footage and analysing it to determine the extent a particular space is successful. For the Remembrance Service in Market Square, we see a large number of people gathering for the two-minute silence. Some of them have been there for 20 minutes waiting for the event to happen at 11am. They are all focused on the cannon in the centre of the square. video we see that the space is empty. This footage was taken at 12 o'clock when there was no special event on and all the signs of the Remembrance Service had gone. This juxtaposition in footage details White's theory that space use is generally sporadic unless a special event is on. This heard for Carl Froch's public workout in the Broadmash Centre. His promotion team had decided to put this event on to publicise his fight and to give a chance for his Nottingham based fans to show their support. This public workout was in the atrium between Albert Street and Collins Street which most people use as a walk through to the station. It was shown live on Sky Sports. Again, people had been gathering throughout the morning, tempted by the cameras and the boxing ring that had been set up. The footage we have here was captured after the workout, when Carl was being interviewed by Sky Sports News. We can still see that there are a large number of people waiting around, hoping to get a photo taken with their local fighter. The footage can be compared with an hour later, when most of the boxing ring has been taken down and the cameras have all gone. The space then goes back to being a shopping centre or a walk through to the station. In landscape design terminology, focal points force the viewer's perspective to a particular location. This diagram shows Trinity Square and its five access routes. All five of these routes provide a transition from a tight space into a large open area seamlessly. There are many factors used to create a focal point. Most of these rely on a sense of contrast. Whether the contrast is realised by using principles such as colour, shape, texture or size is up to the designer. An often utilised method of combining the necessary sense of contrast and high level of usability is by integrating non-natural objects into a landscape otherwise made up of natural components. Perhaps the most popular method used to create the contrast of natural and non-natural elements is the implementation of the concrete seats in the centre of Trinity Square. Due to the location of the sun, Seating on the left hand side was utilised more than others. Throughout this time lapse, an overall observation can be made that people prefer to sit where the sun is shining, rather than the shaded areas. This is further emphasised by the fact that the sunlit area is primarily used by smokers, which all gather by the bin on the left. In contrast, the bin situated in the shaded area to the right is neglected throughout this footage. On the west side of Market Square, a hive of activity and revels throughout the day. With public transport at the forefront of travel around Nottingham, it is important to understand how it all interacts with urban spaces and the people that use them. The transition from pavement to road is almost seamless, so much so it is often forgotten by members of the public, like the woman captured here. This behaviour occurred regularly throughout the day, with people's minds elsewhere on where they needed to be rather than where they were at the time. This corner in particular is one of the busiest in Market Square, with it being the main route to many of Nottingham's most popular stores and restaurants. Here you can see a leaflet distributor taking advantage of the high volume of pedestrian traffic along this store from walkway. Once in a while he has to deal with rejection, something expected considering the number of interactions he has.
Here, a stationary vendor also exploits the number of pedestrians using the walkway. Successful street spaces like this can give you all sorts of social activity. Sitting, talking, nothing talk, people watching, or a plonked goodbye like the two elderly gentlemen do here before going their separate ways. This younger woman checks to see her watch to see if she can spare a couple more minutes before saying goodbye. The man you see standing by the bin has been waiting to meet a friend for some time. Where he stands is a perfect place to wait, with little to no obstruction to views, close to the storefronts and a high number of pedestrians to people watch, and an activity often overlooked when considering design. In previous chapters, the theme has been considering how to attract more people. Effective capacity considers what would happen if this was to seat too well. Five close-up studies were conducted in New York to see if any of the popular seating areas were too successful in attracting people. From the studies, a rough rule of thumb was established. The average number of people using the sitting space during peak periods divide the length of the sitting space in feet by three. This particular area seating space on Market Square is a popular meeting point. 22 people were sitting along this ledge during peak period time. Yes, there are several factors involved. These are nearby pedestrian flow, attractiveness of the area, communities, attractions and sun exposure. Supply is a major factor in effective capacity. A nearby flow of pedestrian movement is necessary as a lot of people have to pass by in order to ride a quota of sitters. Therefore, there is a correlation between pedestrian flow and the amount of people utilising the sitting space. During the peak period, only eight people utilised the seats at Trinity Square. This is due to Trinity Square having less pedestrian movement, nearby amenities and exposure to the seats. Effective capacity's main priority is to ascertain the amount of people who by free choice will sit at a popular location. Each place has its own norm, depending on many particulars, such as the microclimate, comfort of the sea, and attractiveness of the area. That's where we push our eyes in front of ourselves. For large cities, the vast number of people alone can populate a space however badly designed. The high population supplies locations with endless potential users and creates vibrant atmospheres anywhere. Smaller cities do not have this luxury and therefore rely on well designed spaces to attract activity. A lot can also be gained from using a city's heritage, such as landmarks or buildings' importance to anchor a space. Nottingham Council House is a focal point for the city, used as a meeting point for all, enhancing Market Square. This lends to a lively surrounding environment and a healthy supply of people needed to make the city location thrive. A key way that smaller cities such as Nottingham make social spaces work is through shops. Big cities have tall megastructures that can take activity away from street level, having a detrimental effect on the surrounding environment. This can also occur in shopping centre surroundings, which can isolate the public, not promoting the city as a whole. However, Market Square works by interacting the space with the shops. The constant flow of users and the attraction of street level shopping keeps the square permanently moving. In social terms, triangulation refers to the process by which some external catalysts provide a linkage between people and promote strangers to talk to each other. There are various forms of catalysts that can contribute to the interaction and engagement of people, such as physical objects, sites or acts. This historical Robin Hood statue has a strong social effect as it encourages individuals to gather around to talk about and mimic the stance of Robin Hood pulling his bow and arrow. 
Likewise, street entertainers usually have an enticing method of drawing people together. As the man places his money into their pot, he is instantly invited towards the act and is smiling in pure delight. These moments are true recreation and something of great value, though rarely thought of as such. Here, the heart of Nottingham demonstrates how spaces like the Market Square can transform into temporary ice rinks to provide a place for secondary enjoyment. A group of friends are clearly exchanging comments about trying to perform particular moves and are laughing and joking at the thought of it. Musicians are also another great way of attracting a crowd. It is not the excellence of the acts that is important, it is the fact that there are bonds forming between people. 